Rich Turin is the author of Cashless, China's Digital Currency Revolution. Great to have you on the program um, again, Rich. But clear something up for us. I mean, what's the difference between this stablecoin and the central bank's digital currency plans? Oh, that is absolutely my favorite question. Thank you so much, Juliet. <laughs> a pleasure to be back. A stablecoin is a privately issued form of money, meaning that it is backed by the full faith and credit of the company that issues it, as opposed to a central bank digital currency, which is backed by the full faith and credit of the central bank. So both of them are digital currencies. Both of them allow for near immediate, very low cost payments, which are fantastic. But one is based on the central bank backing and is the national currency of the country that issues it. And the other is private money. Nice. So you could have money from whatever large tech company uh, issues the coin. And we'll get on to some of those uh, companies who are keen to get their hands on them in just a moment. But let's talk about the potential of this renminbi backed um, stablecoin maybe disrupting the dependence um, of digital tokens on the dollar. Yeah, and this is a, hey, look, this is a real possibility. But I think the thing that we all have to focus on, and I think the most important thing to focus on, is will a renminbi stable coin be good for China's trade and good for China? And I think the answer is yes, it will. And then once this trade takes off and once the use of this coin starts, then we can worry about what it does to the dollar. But whatever, if it, if it is long term a challenge, challenger to the dollar, we will only know that after some years of use. First, we have to build it. First, we have to have people test it and use it. Mm. And third, we have to people have people love it so that they want to do business um, with Hong Kong using the digital R the, the using the stable coin RMB. OK, so you need to have this sort of longer term outlook. So, so tell me, why are um, big brands like JD.com and Group, you know, why are they so keen? What revenue streams might a Remnant B stable coin generate for them? Sure. These are the two best examples of stablecoin users because Ant Group and JD are both e-commerce providers. They have people buying things from them internationally, and some of the objects they might want to buy are not very expensive. So if I wanted to make a normal transfer payment from, say, United States to China to buy something, um, and I want to use SWIFT as my payment means, I'll have to pay $50 to my bank just to make the SWIFT transfer. Well, maybe I'm only buying something that costs $25. So it kills low cost or the cost of a high cost of dollar transfer or any currency transfer because mm -hmm. SWIFT is expensive in virtually any uh, nation you're in. That really inhibits um, e-commerce. So having access to a stable coin will give uh, both Ali, uh, both uh, uh, JD.com and Alibaba access to a f immediate, near immediate, near almost costless uh, uh, payment system. So that'll jack up their e-commerce revenue. Yep. Now wait for it. Yep. The next part is if they run the stable coin, they make money on the reserves that are held by the stablecoin company. So it's a highly profitable uh, uh, venture for them in two ways, both through reserves and through the boost in their e-commerce business. Richard Turin, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much.